Hello, I'm Alex Lafkius. Today I want to talk to you about how to convert a follow into an eat. One stuff. This is why we streamer fish. We want to see them and we want to see them eat. So, the thing that will help you the most is picking up on the fish as quick as possible. Now, you don't, you're not necessarily going to say, oh, there's a brown trout. But you might see a shadow. You might see a flash of color. Something like that. That's your first sign that there's a fish there. Um, a lot of times, you know, you'll be like, oh, I thought I saw something. Yeah, usually that's a fish. You know, when I hear people say that, I usually assume they did see something. So what do you do after that? Um, one, usually when I see a fish or I, I see a motion that looks aggressive to some degree, whether it's just color or whatever, a lot of times I'm going to stall the fly and assume that if I saw a flash that he was trying to eat it or something. You know, first I'll give it a strip right when I see the flash to make sure that wasn't to eat. And then it pauses. And I'll hold it and hold it and hold it. And if I don't see anything, nothing there, back into the tree. Pop again. Wiggle, wiggle. Keep it in the area. Try not to strip it away from that area super fast. You know, try to keep it in there. The current's a lot of times pushing it into that spot. So just try to hold it in that spot. Work it a little bit. Work it a little bit. And then keep coming. Keep coming with it. Now, if that fish is not hooked up, but yet you can pick up on them again. And, and, and I try to fish like there's a fish following every cast see something or not try to get a bite every time you're fishing um but what i'll try to do is keep picking up on that fish and at that point you can start reading behavior you know it, a lot of times you'll see a fish kind of snap it you know if you're seeing a fish try to snap at your fly get just get it in front of him get it to him he's trying to eat it he's trying to eat it if they're doing this that's that it's a jaws factor their mouth snapping mouth snapping keep it there keep it there stall it stall it He's going to eat it. He wants to eat it. Let him eat it. Um, don't rip it away. Do not, when they're trying to grab it and grab it, don't rip it away. That's going to scare the hell out of them. I've seen fish coming up like this and people go, oh, I'm going to give it one more strip. Oh, well, yeah, that, that, that didn't work. Fish gone. You know, no, if they're trying to come and eat it, let them eat it. Okay. Now, if you have fish hanging down below and you've got some weighted fly on it, send it. Try to see if you can get it to fall down into his home. Sometimes those fish I'll see sneak up and just doom, suck something in, you know, as it falls back in towards their face. They're kind of following it slow and low, and then all of a sudden something kind of falls down towards their face, and doom, that's when they eat. So you can look for that if you have a weighted fly on. That'll trigger a lot of fish times. Um, you know, some certain times a year, it, it's even it's the most effective thing out there. Usually you see that in colder water, 45, 47, you know, and even colder. Um, that'll be a trigger. A couple reasons, you know, a lot of the bait goes to the bottom. That's where their hiding spot is, so that's where they're headed. The other thing to watch for, and a lot of times on these deep follows, those are the tough ones to convert. So one, if you're getting a deep follow, one of two things could happen. One, fish is totally disinterested. And you'll see them just tracking in real slow behind it, not getting giddy and not kicking much, but just like they're hardly moving. They're just following the fly, typically deep down below it. Those are the fish that, you know, it's, you know, remember where they're at, but it doesn't seem like they're going at that point. Now, if you get something that wants to come out and snap, that's, that's kind of the difference. A lot of the issue, when you see a fish that's under your fly, but kind of, you think you could get them, you weren't deep enough to begin that presentation, you know, or you were deep enough to begin, but as it got deeper, as it came out through the channel, your fly never got deep enough to get it to where that fish was comfortable to come eat. So it's something to think about is try to like, you know, keep that fly deep throughout the presentation. The fish are more comfortable down there. So by, if you do that, it's going to be easier to convert those follows into eats because you're in their face. They have less distance to go. They're more apt to eat it. Um, you know, I've had a couple other instances, you know, we used to fish a river where you would see a fish track out a little bit coming off the bank and they'd chase and chase. And it was like, you'd kill your fly and they'd start turning to go back into the bank. If you twitched it one more time, right as they started that turn, they would turn on a dime and come and murder it. That's just how those fish were. I think we beat that out of them. I haven't seen them do that as well in quite a few years. Um, that was very effective. So there's, and, uh, the other thing you want to do is uh, on the burn. That's the other presentation I wanted to touch on because the burn is one, the two hand strip, you know, is one that you'll get a lot of follows on. On that one, I've been able to see that stalling that fly when that fish is running at it 
is the best way to trigger a bite. Usually that kind of gets it where it's like, it's going, it's going, this stops, this keeps going, it gets to fight or flight. And those things, a lot of times, will just inhale it right there or run like the wind. And if they run like the wind, they probably weren't going to eat it anyway. But that stall on the two-hand burn is can be the big trigger on that. Um, another thing I saw a few years ago, and this helped us convert a bunch of fish once we figured it out, is we had... Uh, I'd been fishing a low water situation and I'd been fishing an unweighted fly and it had worked good. You know, fished it, fished it, caught fish for a few days, got rain overnight. And all of a sudden we were fishing that same fly and the fish were pretty much in the same spots, but I was watching them roll and they were rolling a foot or so underneath the fly, a foot or so underneath the fly, like not coming up to grab it. I basically took the same pattern. Well, it was an all white, you know, a little unweighted fly. And I took an all white fly with a little skull head on it. And that made the difference that day. From that point on, we saw those fish eating it instead of just swiping under it. So in a few instances, I've seen that that adding weight will help, um, giving it pauses. But the biggest thing is learn how to see these fish. Make sure you appreciate the little flash of color. That could be a very big fish coming. Sometimes you just see a little bit of gold, you know, and that that's your key. It could be this you know, or this coming at it, you're just seeing a little chunk of it. So really try to work on it. Uh, I strongly recommend always having two pairs of sunglasses, one for bright conditions um, and dark conditions. The, the ones I've switched to in dark conditions are the Smith low light igniters. Those have been the best lens for me. It's, I don't have any of the headache or weird color stuff that the yellow lenses do. Those ones seem easier for me to use and, and good optics on them. Um, this will make you a better fisherman. You, you know, you've got to learn how to convert those follows. You're only going to see so many active fish a day. And if you can make those active fish eat your fly, that's, that's very important. Who knows on a good day how many fish you're going to see. Capitalize on the ones you see. Um, doing little things like this are going to help you a long, long way.